Welcome everyone to another episode issue presentation of TechSoup Connect Australia. And my name is Kat Milner. I'm the owner, operator, and chief technical ninja of Create Your Change. And I am your host today. And today we are meeting with Talia Kate, otherwise known as TK. <laughs> Byron, who I've had the pleasure of having in my world for, we worked it out that it's probably been about two years now. And it's one of those fun things, thank you, COVID, where we have become very close friends, and or at least really good friends, I like to think. And we've actually never met each other because I'm in Adelaide, South Australia, and she's in Brisbane, which is Queensland, I think. Yep, perfect. So we we welcome everybody. We're excited that you're here. Obviously, the more that you put into the workshop today, the more you're going to get out of it. So please make sure that you have a way of taking notes because you're definitely going to want to do that during this incredibly value-packed presentation. We're going to ask that you do not unmute yourself unless TK specifically asks you to do that. Otherwise, if you have a question, please drop it in the chat. I'll be keeping an eye on that. If you don't know where the chat is, look at the bottom of your screen and you should see one of those little chat bubbles. Just tap that or click that and it'll open the chat dialog box and you can enter your questions from there and I'll make sure that TK knows about those. So in order to respect the time of everyone who was here on time, and we thank you for that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So TK was born in, are you, sorry, <laughs> I can't read this morning. <laughs> so she's from Brisbane, Queensland. When she was 17, she was bribed with chocolate and a day off of school to attend her first personal development seminar and got hooked from there. She realized with the right knowledge, support, and systems, you really can change the course of your life, your organization, and kind of everything in your world. She then made a decision to saturate herself with everything to do with human transformation and has become a walking encyclopedia of self-development. The rest is history. Her company is called Badass Beings, of which she is the director, and it's designed to help people create transformational programs and experiences. She's deeply passionate about making it easier for you to become sought after in your industry, which I know is a good part of why you are here today, because of the changes people get when they come into your world. And we, that's exactly what we want to do is change the world. So without further ado, TK Byron. Thank you so much. I feel like we all need a cat in our lives, especially because I'm Australian. I'm used to accents. I'm like, oh, having someone pew out with an accent is amazing. All right. So let's get underway. So today's masterclass is how to increase funding for your programs. As Kat suggested, you'll learn a little bit more about my journey as we go on is I help people with their offers and what they bring to the world. Now, you're probably here for one of three reasons. The first reason is that you run programs or desire to run programs as part of the services that you offer. And maybe you're looking at getting additional funding for those services, because if it is specifically a non-for-profit as well, you know, that money has got to come from somewhere. The second reason why you might be here, now just in the Zoom chat below, just drop a one, two, or three. It's okay if you're a one, two, and three, if these are resonating with you, if you're like, that's me. The second reason why you might be here is that you know you want to create lasting change, but you're not exactly sure how to orchestrate that. Like you've maybe been in programs, seen programs, run some programs, but there's like a little question mark of being like, is this really creating lasting change or can I do this better? So that's place number two. And the third place or position you might be is like, hey, it's a Thursday here in Australia. If you're overseas, maybe it's a Wednesday night. And you're like, what else do I have to do? You, know, you might need to kill some time, take some notes, have a little bit of fun. But more than anything, you're ready to receive some actionable takeaways. And so those might be the three reasons that you are here. So drop a one, two or three. I'm just always nice to know like the kind of pulse check of all the humans here. Now, I can totally appreciate that you might be busy doing some things. And so it's okay if you're like, TK, I can't quite access the Zoom chat at the moment. But I am curious to know, if you can, what specifically are you wanting funding for? So this masterclass is all about orchestrating a program to get more funding. What are you wanting that funding for? The reason why I do ask is because it means I can potentially tailor some of the examples I do off the top of my head if I am familiar with the landscape of what people are tuning into. So just in the chat, I'll keep a rough eye on it. So we've got working with seniors to become more digitally literate, which I love. Now, while those come in and you're typing in what you want more funding for, 
here's the thing. You've probably already told for the 0.2 seconds that we've known each other that I like to have some fun. So if you're okay with having some fun, just raise a little hand, even if you have to do a little finger, spirit fingers. And just be prepared to know that we are absolutely going to learn some something. Oh, Jill, I'm loving the party, the party hats. That's amazing. And finally, I'm sure we all have at least one of two pinkies. I want you to hold it up. Even if I can't see it, pinky promise me that you swear you're going to implement something that you've learned today. Because there's no point you showing up, me being here, delivering some amazing things and you taking notes if you don't actually do anything with it. So if we're ready to have some fun, learn, and pinky swear we're going to implement, you're in the right place. Okay. So that kind of brings us to kick things off is because ultimately human beings are coming to us for transformation and we are receiving funding for a transformation of some sorts. Whether it's like Kat, who's working with seniors to help them become digitally literate. Me, myself, I've actually worked a lot with non-for-profits in the teen sector of like uh, teen leadership and digital detoxing and things like that. So that's in and of itself a transformation. Maybe you're like, Shia, Sha- oh my gosh, I apologize, Sharon, and you're bringing tailored education to small businesses, which I love as well. So just have a quick think about what is the transformation I'm ultimately providing? And off the back of that, do you actually know what the definition or the history of transformation is? And transformation comes from two words, two Latin words, the first being trans and the second one being form. So when you combine them together, this is a bit quick, fun history lesson, is essentially we're combining the Latin words to change in shape. So we're taking from someone from a start to a finish or from a before to an after. And the true test, there you go, say that 10 times fast, of personal transformation is whether someone changes the trajectory of their life. Now, this can seem like a huge thing to be like, whoa, like this is a huge milestone or a huge objective to blow up to. But just know that it might just be subtle shifts. If you have read the book, and I will quote it later, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Brilliant book. Go get out of the library if you're not convinced you'll like it first. I can almost promise you'll read three pages and go and buy it for yourself. But he talks about if you are standing in LA and if you were to go flying to New York, if you were just to shift the nose of the airplane 3.5 degrees, now 3.5 degrees, you almost can't even put your fingers up to orchestrate what 3.5 degrees is. If you then extrapolate that across the United States of America, so if you were to say from zero degrees, you're pointing, then you change it 3.5 degrees, you would end up instead of New York at Washington. So the reason why I like to use this example is because your program, you might be like, whoa, like, I don't know if it's changing the trajectory of someone's life. But even a small shift, something they're saying yes and they start saying no to can start to have big impact over time, okay? So knowing what the transformation is that your organization provides, know that results can be quantified into four different ways. So first of all, they're time bound. They could be immediate and long-term. The long-term is what we were just talking about now. So long-term wise, maybe they start to increase their capabilities. Maybe they start to change their lifestyle or their habits or their relationships. But in the immediate short term, maybe they get more confidence, more clarity and more direction. So this is a really nice way because I think often when we look at programs is we start to maybe look at the long-term things or maybe look at the short term, but we don't consider both. And the thing that drives both of these is the internal shifts that then result in the external. So if you think about it, for me to have confidence, clarity, or direction, there's a shift in the way I've started to think. Maybe there's some new perspectives, some new insights. Maybe I've released some old thoughts or experiences. And as a result of this internal shift, my external world starts to change. As a result of that, long-term wise, my life starts to look differently. And I might start saying yes or no to certain things. A classic example is I recently found out that apparently gluten and wheat and dairy, all those things and sugar are real bad for me, like real bad. Not just that they're bad, but cause an immune response. And so that's been a huge shift in perspective in the fact that I've been shown blood work that shows that my body starts to fight itself and certain immuno bodies get shown in my blood work. And as a result, it's shifted my perspective. So I started to say yes and no to certain foods. And as a result, long-term wise, that's going to have a completely different effect on my life, my livelihood, all those things. 
just as a personal example. So where does that leave you? If you're getting funding for results, how clear are you on the change that you provide? Now, if you're like, I don't know, then strap in because I'm going to help you walk through that, okay? In fact, here is my big promise. Is over the next 60-ish minutes, you're going to pick up the tools to implement into your already existing activities and curriculum to increase the traction and the long-term change. You're also going to find a simple but super effective way to realize the true impact that your organization is making. And also, how do you easily track that both quantitative and qualitative? Because it's all nice to have these great testimonials, but also do you have hardcore data to be like, this is where someone was at the start. This is where they are. And this is why you should back me so we can change even more lives. Okay. And the third thing that you're going to pick up on, and this is game changing, is this is my go-to exercise. It takes just minutes to do, but it really clearly articulates the difference between why you and everyone else. So just for some context is I have a girlfriend in Europe, a multi six-figure business owner. And when she went to launch her most recent program for her business, but you can take this for your next program you're creating or some existing ones, she didn't know how she was different from everyone else in the sphere. And so the exercise I'm going to teach you at the end, she did this one exercise. Now, I don't know about you. There's people who do an exercise. There's people who like do the exercise. And so I'm going to show you both ways to do it, but she went all in. And by the end of it, she had one diagram that looked very pretty. You don't have to draw. It's literally just lines. And she could clearly tell someone, if they're like, how are you different from this person? How are you different from this program? And she could clearly, just by looking at that diagram, be able to rattle off the reasons why she's different and why you should come to her and no one else. Super powerful exercise, especially if you're just starting out, you feel like the market swarmed, you've got any sort of imposter syndrome or doubt as to why you and why should someone back you or fund your program, this will help with that. Okay. So taking a quick breath for a second. Are you ready? Now, if you have your phones out, if you want, there is a worksheet to go along with today. So something you'll learn about me is I'm the queen of spreadsheets, worksheets, documents, and I'm the how person. So some people don't like the how questions. I'm always like, okay, you have a big idea. I'm the how girl. I'm like the person that brings it into reality. So if you want to scan this in, otherwise, if you go, it's hard to read. I apologize. Badassbeings.com forward slash funding. It will redirect you to where you can download this worksheet. You can either do it as we go along or watch the replay on two times speed and actually fill it out however you want. It'll really help you implement what we're about to talk about. Okay. By the way, any questions along the way, raise your hand. Kat will catch them. Otherwise, at the end, there is a Q&A situation as well. Now, first of all, I know Kat's spoken about me a bit, but who am I? So that's how you spell my name. It's a bit of a mouthful. As you can appreciate, and Kat mentioned, I went to my first personal development seminar bribed with chocolate and a day off school, and it was pretty much love at first sight. But you can imagine having a really long name. It's a bit of a mouthful for 2,000 new people to say. So that's where TK came from. And I had these big dreams of being a forensic psychologist who also worked in the SAS and was maybe a ballerina. Xena and Tomb Raider were my role models, just to give you some context. And essentially, I fell in love with the personal development world. I love the conversations you have, the way that you can come into a program. And I don't know if you can relate to this with the experiences you create for the humans of the world. But you can be a vastly different human being, a few conversations, a few exercises later. And that's what I love and why I'm so passionate about helping people create really transformational experiences is because I know the difference it's made in my life, traveling around Australia, going overseas, both as participants, as crew. In fact, I'll show you a couple of my, so these are some exercises we've done with teams and you break through boards. There's a board. We've broken arrows on teens' necks. Now, you may not be doing these sorts of things if you're teaching older folk how to be digitally literate. I don't know if you've heard of this guy called Tony Robbins. He gets you to walk across coals. So this is me being part of the fire crew to help build that. I was also a mic runner for him. Done programs with sailing and leadership and that content just it goes on. We've traveled and driven tra- uh, tanks over cars. Lane Beachley was a seven-time pro Australian surfer. I actually applied for funding for her program and was selected out of 5,000 applicants for my business back in the day, which was teen coaching. 
So I know what it's like to put your name forward and try and articulate why you and no one else. And thankfully she saw the benefits of my work and my dreams and she backed that. So flash forward to four years ago, and I've taken all that experience, basically said goodbye to marketing in the traditional sense and copywriting. I really went all in on using all those skills, all that experience and helping human beings like you create really epic things in the world, whether it's non-for-profits, business owners, whatever it is, whether it's workshops, retreats, if there is any way that you are helping a human being going from wherever they are to closer to where they want to be, that's my realm in which I play with. So that's like my own little notes. Be like, TK, why'd you take this light away? So basically what we're working on today is really fundamentally how do you create a transformational experience? And I know I keep saying that a lot, so let's dive in. Now, why you might want to tune to this specific pit is there's a lot going on in the world. I don't know about you and how your programs are designed and potentially they're really intentional, but I've definitely witnessed a lot of experiences where there are a lot of activities going on. Like it's a lot of fun, but it's a bit haphazard. It's almost like someone's just like thrown paint at the wall and you do this activity and you do this team bonding thing, but it's, there's no real cohesion. And the thing is, when human beings are in a new environment, they like to be guided. They like to have a sense of certainty. And so the way that we bring that is we get very clear on where are our people at, where do we want to take them, and what is the journey we want to take them on. And this should be like a tight movie, like a blockbuster or it doesn't have to be blockbuster, but like slick Academy Award winning kind of movie. Not like some, I don't know, Blair Witch, like home job kind of thing where just all these scenes are together and they're not really making a cohesive movie. And so in a moment, I'll show you how do you actually start to create that. But that's essentially what we're going for is like all these different pieces weave in to create a story and build capacity or move a human being through a journey. And ultimately that journey actually creates a new version of who they are. And something that we'll talk about in a moment relating back to James Clear and Atomic Habits is that ultimately our programs should start to create a shift in identity. Whether you're helping a senior suddenly realize that it's actually not that hard to pick up a digital device and like he feels more confident or she feels more confident. Or maybe it's helping those small business owners really understand whatever it is that you're wanting them to like deepen into. There is a shift of identity and a way that they think and the choices that they make. And that's what we're going towards ultimately, okay? Just give me a thumbs up in the chat if that's all making sense. And you're probably like, TK, how am I supposed to give you a thumbs up in the chat? So ultimately, this is the question or the statement that I love to know. And feel free to drop it in the chat. So the problem I solve is, or I help someone get something. And I know we've already popped some of those in there already, but this is essentially what it all comes back to. It's very core. And from there... I'm going to be going through some examples. The main one I'm going to lead into is actually a non-for-profit organization that I'm currently in the process of volunteering in. So I just know it very intimately. So we're just going to use that as an example. So the example for this particular organization is helping teens build resilience by embodying the traits and pillars displayed by soldiers of a historical Australian campaign. I'm not going to go into the organization and this is my interpretation of theirs. They might disagree. I don't know. That's why I'm like keeping it, not saying the name of the organization, but this is my interpretation as a volunteer of what it provides. And in your worksheet, if you've downloaded it now, or you look at it later, there's a space for this where you do your journey breakdown. So what is the starting point and what is the finishing point? And my recommendation for my clients is every time you create a new offer or a new program, come back to this worksheet. This is actually only part of a 10 page, 15 page document that we actually work through. But come back to this as a place where you have everything so that, you know, whether it's anyone in your organization, your volunteers, it's like the one place where all the thoughts are stored about this particular program. Now, once you've got your start and your finishing point, know that there are two elements, as we spoke about. There's your inner world and the outer world. Now, if you want, how I started is I just started putting like, where are they starting from? Where are they finishing from or finishing at, I should say. And I then chunk them into, okay, is this more of an inner world or an outer world thing? So take the hiking example. Is inner world, 
right now they're teens working out where they fit in the world. They're in their 14s to 18 year olds. There's areas of improvement with confidence. I could go on a lot more, but I was just quickly brain dumping. The outer world is they're potentially addicted to tech. Maybe they don't necessarily hike or go outdoors a whole lot. And then the finishing point is they are confident at hiking. They have a lot of reference points for where they've overcome adversity and they're mentally stronger. And outer world stuff, I should say, is they're a lot fitter and they've done some things that they may have never done before. They walk away with lifelong friends and they've also experienced 12 days without tech. So whatever that may look like with you, that's an opportunity just to pop that down. Now, most people are on top of all of that. Like they, they're very much aware of that. It's the next thing of where things start to come a little unhinged. Now, as I mentioned, James Clear recently tipped the whole goals and personal development a little on its head when he said, maybe it's not so much about us setting goals or us setting finishing points, but instead, what if we actually focused on the habits that got us there? So this is the book in case you're like, what is this book like? And his argument was this, you do not rise to the level of goals, you fall to the level of your systems or your habits, essentially. And I think this explains it beautifully. So if you're a coach, your goal might be to win a championship. Your system is the way you recruit players, manage your assistant coaches and conduct practice. I'm going to duck down to this one. If you're a musician, your goal might be to play a new piece of music. Your system is how often you practice, how you break down and tackle difficult difficult measures, and your method for receiving feedback from your instructor. So how does this all play in? I want you to think about rather than the finishing point just being like, where are they at? But what is the finishing point in who we want them to be? So for instance, with the hiking programs, they might identify as a hiker now. They might now identify as a morning person amongst many other things. And what might they have to release in order to step into that identity? And then as a result, so one thing that James Clear says is, another argument he says is, instead of focusing on winning the championship, if we just focus on the systems, if we just focus on the habits, then the goal becomes a byproduct. What are the systems or the habits or the traits that you're wanting your people to pick up on? And so this particular program, it was weekly hikes. It was saying yes to more challenges. So it leads us, let me just come back here for a moment to here. As we start to think about, okay, I've got my starting point, my finishing point, but ultimately when someone comes through my program, who is it they end up being? What are the habits they end up demonstrating? Now, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand on this part because I'm about to move on to the next part. Otherwise, can answer questions at the end, okay? But ultimately, the thing is starting point, finishing point, and starting to think about who are my people starting to become by going through the program that I offer. Now, the next thing is how do we create momentum-fueled experiences? And clearly, the picture's just having a moment deciding not to actually play by So momentum-based experiences are different from traditional experience. You might've been used to in the past when you go to learn something like a course or when you go to school, it's like sitting down and you sit there for ages. Here's the thing is our attention spans are like shock. Human beings are starting to, where they used to be able to sit down in a classroom. Now they look at a 15 second video. If it's not holding their attention, they swipe next. Thanks to social media. And as a result of our attention spans, we really want to be doing things in the world. We want to be implementing. And the reason being is that the education information age, there is so much available. We've almost moved past that. We're overwhelmed with all the information. And what we're really wanting is fast action, quick wins, which feeds into this whole dopamine hit and this dopamine lifestyle we're now used to. So social media releases a huge amount of dopamine because it's quick wins. And so with your program, what you're creating, I would have a look at, do you get regular hits and momentum or progress or success from that? I'm about to show now. If someone is going from wherever they're starting from, they go through your program, who do they become at the finishing line? There are some steps to get there, okay? And so one of the easiest things you can do is just be like, all right, cool, if I'm starting here and finishing here, what are the steps? What's the journey? And it doesn't matter about getting them in order first, just list out all the steps. 
And the easiest way, honestly, is, and I've got it in the document here, you just list them out. You're just like, okay, cool. What are all the things I need to know? And so with hiking, <laughs> this was a huge learning curve for me because I was not a hiker. There was so much gear we needed to get. I had to go find out boots and even finding like hiking boots. I don't know if anyone here hikes, feel free to drop in my fellow hikers. With hiking boots, you need to chunk up half a size because your feet swell when you hike. Certain hiking companies, when you go into their store, they have a little, like a step that goes up and down. And so you practice and the boots going up and if your foot slides back and then when you go down, you see if your foot slides down and you step on the side and see if your foot rolls. So little things like that, if you've never hiked before, if you've never been in whatever thing you're teaching, you may never know. Let's say you're teaching people how to be more digitally literate and you start with a phone, like maybe they don't know how to make this screen bigger. I don't know about you, but my mom, bless her cotton socks. When I look at her phone, it's got three words on it. The wording is so large. And so if someone doesn't know that they can actually increase the height of their font, they may never want to touch that thing because they can't read it. Okay. So what are all the different things that someone might have to go through and learn in order to get from here to here? Again, coming back to the hiking example for a moment, there are specific calls that you have on the track. Like you say, green, red, yellow. So green means, yep, we can keep walking. Yellow means slow down. Red means stop. Someone's had an injury. Another thing is that we I learned from hiking, just for an example, is that we keep everyone on the bus. So when you're hiking in large groups, you want to keep everyone on the bus. So from the first person to the back person, it should be no more than a bus length apart. So these are little things specific to hiking, but what are the little specific things for you? I'd be really curious. Feel free to drop them in the chat. The next piece, I know we're moving fast. That's why the worksheet is there is essentially now, how do we take these steps and start to put them in an order? Now, the best way I love to do this, if you're not a document person or if you're a kinesthetic learner or you just like, oh, I can't look at another screen is post-it notes. I only have a single one here. And what I like to do is get a whole chunk of post-it notes in a big, nice wall, or you can get a whiteboard. And I list the start and the end point, And I just write all the different steps evolved along the way or included along the way. And then I start to move the post-it notes around and be like, okay, how do I make this into a movie? And you can start to play the movie ahead and be like, oh, like this actually needs to come in front of here. And this needs to come in here. And so you can start then to see visually and run your mind through the movie of, okay, does this make sense for a really transformational program? So it ends up looking a little bit like this. So start and you have your different post-it notes along the way. Now, another thing I like to do, we'll get to in a moment, is have different colors. So I might have one color, which is the big topic. And then I might have a different color, which is an exercise for. So let's say all my big topics are this aqua green color clearly not an artist. I have all the activities in yellow. And so what happens is that this activity might relate to this particular topic. So I'll stack them on top of each other. So know that you can stack post-it notes on top of each other and be like, okay, cool. So for instance, if one of my modules is, okay, the hiking 101, which we'll get to in a moment, things that they need to learn about is gear. Then they might need to learn about calls and they might need to learn about certain other things. And so I start to stack those post-it notes on top of each other. Okay, so far we've covered human beings are come to you for a transformation and you'll get funding for that transformation. The way that we create a really incredible one is that we take people on a journey from start to end. Ultimately, along the way, they'll become a slightly different version of themselves. The way that we do that is we stack, we get clear on the steps and we start to stack them into a movie. All right. So. Here's what it looks like in the worksheet is you have a sequence. So instead of me going horizontally, I've gone vertically. So for instance, with a particular foundation is they got to meet their team. Then we learned about hiking. Then we started to learn about the significance of the campaign, the war campaign. Then we set some personal goals and then we did some preliminary testing. So that's just an example of the very start of the program. And I might even be like, mm, you know what? Some of these things feel like they need to switch around and that's where I start to play the movie. Okay. Now, here's where it gets juicy, is ultimately in order to do these things, people might need some resources along the way. So I mentioned with the hiking and the boots, 
I learned from other people like you need to do these certain things when asking for boots. So you might have, for instance, when it comes to say looking at hiking boots or whatever it is for you, there might be like some tutorials on how to check if your boots are correctly fitted for you. There might be a voucher, which we actually had because we were being sponsored for, as a non-for-profit to certain places. Maybe you have a gear list. Maybe you have a Spotify playlist or a YouTube playlist. Maybe you have some recipes. What are the resources that they might actually need in order to complete that step? So if I'm going from here to here and step one, okay, what resources might they need and what activities might they need? And so this allows us to create momentum fueled experiences where people aren't just learning, but they're implementing and they're moving forward onto the next step. Okay. So in your worksheet, it looks like this, and this is a support and the resources. So you've got, what is the step? What action do you want them to take? Is there anything they need to learn along the way? And then in order for them to do the final ticket off the list, what might they need to do resource wise or activities in order to do that? Okay, so here's some examples. So in order to meet the team, we actually had a camp where they met everyone. That was the activity. And there was a whole bunch of stuff in there. With the hiking 101, we actually got supplied our backpack and our water bladder. So what can you maybe supply your people just to help them out? Is it a checklist? Is it a cheat sheet? There's a worksheet that goes along with today. So that's a resource I've read to help implement this. So what can you do is to give someone a hand to help them along their journey? There was weekly home play for the kids to learn about the significance of the war campaign that they were learning about. So there was videos for them to watch. There was a textbook. There were workbooks for them to work through. And there was also group discussions. So what can you create as an ecosystem to really help your people? At certain leadership camps I've done, there have been certain exercises, like we've had the arrow break, the board break, those sorts of things. So what resources and activities can you supply your humans? All righty. Now, the really interesting one, tracking your impact and change. So ultimately, it's all well and good for us to have these incredible experiences, these incredible programs. But when it comes to then talking to funding bodies about it, and they're like, okay, so what do you have? You're like, I have this funky video and some testimonials. It's like, all right, but where's the tangible data? So this is how we start to extract tangible data, okay? Now, a couple of things to bear in mind is that not all change is immediate. So let's take, for instance, you start working out. There's that famous saying that it takes four weeks for you to feel the difference, eight weeks for your friends to notice, and 12 weeks for the rest of the world to notice how fit and trim you're getting, okay? But you may not have someone for 12 weeks. And so what we start to look at is that inner world change as well as that outer world change, okay? And we do that with trackable results. So the way that we do this is the metrics, this column here. And what we want to look at is in this particular section, when meeting the team, whatever it is for you, step one, what do they get more or less of? Now, you could have internal world. Do they get more confident? Do they get more clear on something? Do they suddenly realize that they can do well at something? How would they rate their ability? And with the external, there's fitness testing. There's maybe how quickly you can do something. Maybe it's how well you can do something or identify something. Okay. I know let's take the hiking, for instance, we had to do fitness testing. So good old beat test. I don't know if you've ever done one of those. If you've ever done one in your life, one's probably more than enough, but there was like planks and sit-ups and all sorts of things. So we could see and track how our fitness was going as well as how confident we felt hiking and a couple of other metrics. And so this is one of my mentors. And I think he does this brilliantly. He does this for every single one of his programs. This particular one was a business program. So he's taken his key pillars or his key things that he steps through and he wraps a sentence around it. So it's how well do you, for instance, identify your ideal client? Now, this is a five-day program and he gets you to rate yourself every single day. You don't have to do this. You might do a start and an end. But what I love about this is if you notice the wording, how well do you, do you have this in place? How easily do you find this? All of these are very much internal world metrics. And so even though you're learning something and then the next day, you're actually going back and checking yourself back in, there is capacity for that number to increase. So just, yeah, just in this program, I think I went from a 24 to, I don't know what that says, 45 maybe. 
And so maybe that was enough, not enough time for me to go out and do real world results with my business, but the amount of internal world clarity and confidence I had, I could immediately start to see the ROI of this program. So I would look at with you and the programs that you create for people, are you tracking internal stuff as well as the external? Because this stuff is often like our go-to thing, whether it's I've done these programs where we've, we've tested people's speed reading abilities and how many words they can read in their comprehension. But it's like, okay, but how confident did those kids actually feel before and after? Okay. And it usually starts a qualitative data that then you can start to present to funding bodies. Now, before I go on to our final piece, any questions? I just pop them in the chat if you need. Okay. Finally, the exercise. Now you might actually need a pen and paper for this if you're not an immediate spreadsheet wizard, but this is all about showcasing how you're different. And it serves a single question of clearly, can you clearly articulate why you, all right? And why someone should fund you. I'm just going to give it a second because this is a really cool money falling. So this is what I want for you is money just falling into your lap. (laughs) Some of the incredible programs that you run. All right, so. You can Google this. This isn't my intellectual property. It's called the Blue Ocean Strategy. There's a book about it. If you want to go read more about it, you can go YouTube it. And what I'm about to teach is only a small segment of it that was taught to me by Marie Folio. But essentially, this is what the diagram ends up looking. It can be a little more complicated or a little more easy. You may not have chocolate, vanilla, Hawaiian, and margarita. This is my dad and I doing some fun times talking about ice cream and pizza. But I'll show you exactly how we go about it. So how you create your one image is essentially we need to look at what makes you different and listing out with a capital T or little lowercase, starting with one to five things that makes your organization stand out from the industry. It could be your values. It could be your why, whatever that may be. The next thing is you want to look at separate column. What makes your program different? Now you can see how the you, why I've segmented these is because you might have different programs. So the foundation that I volunteer at, there's a digital detox program. There's a nine month long program. And so having separate blue ocean strat, like it's called blue ocean strategy, blue ocean graphs or diagrams for each one really helps us then articulate, Hey, these are the programs we run and this is how they're different. Okay. So we've got What's different about you? What's different about your program? And you could just say, you could actually instead instead of our programs, make it this specific program. And then what is the industry norm is your third column here. And so you could think about industry norms in general, or you could think about your competitors and start to write down, like, what do your competitors actually do? And you could just have a big, long old list. All right. And the final thing is rate yourself and your competitors against each one of those criteria. So it ends up looking a bit like this is I have combined, if you see here, go back. I have combined all three of those columns into one. I'm not, we're not going to do an Excel Google sheets tutorial now, but know that's in the workbook and you can recreate this diagram, but I've combined it all into one. Now you might name a specific competitor or you might just say industry average, whatever you want to do, but you could put competitor one, competitor two. So at the very start of this exercise or this this talk, I told you how I had a particular girlfriend over in Europe who didn't know how she differentiated herself from about 10 different programs and why someone should come learn business from her. 100% Sharon is imposter syndrome is huge for so many people, 100%. So what she did is she actually listed out all the different courses that she thought her course or her program was like. And then she went through all the criteria and she said, okay, this course, do like, how would they rank the importance of this? How would they rank the importance of this? How would they rank the importance of this? By the way, the numbers I put in here do not reflect this organization. It was just, I just put numbers in just to showcase the squiggly lines. And so what happened was she ended up ranking, I think it was about 10 different programs. And then she ranked herself. And so what it then produces is down here is all the different criteria and up here is the level of importance. I recommend just doing one to 10 to keep it nice and simple. And so what she could clearly see is if someone's how you different, say competitive A, she could be like, all right, so competitive A is this light blue, I'm this. She's like, all right, so you know how that person is, they don't care about hiking. They, they don't really fund like fully military based things. They, their program is nine months long. That's the same as me. 
but here's how I'm different. And so what this allows is for you to tell a narrative just by looking at this. Just going to leave this for a second for a mic drop. Because when you truly do this and you realize how incredible you are as a human or you as an organization and you as your program, you're like, huh, why have I not had squillions of dollars in funding already? But it might just be this realization that allows you to then have the confidence and the clarity and the conviction to go out and start backing yourself even more. So I would love to know what have been your biggest takeaways so far. Now we've flown through that and very aware of the time. We still have 15 minutes. Yeah. Are there any questions or your biggest takeaways? Drop them in the chat box. I would love to know. Also, because we do have time, if anyone would like to workshop any of this, whether it's recorded or unrecorded, Kat can decide that. Happy to do. But my biggest suggestion would be watch the replay, press pause, go through the worksheet, press play, watch it on two times speed if you wish, and fill it out as you go along. And every time you as a human being or you as an organization go to create something new that you want to offer the world, whether it's a class, a worksheet, an activity, whatever it may be, use this or feel free to use this as an actual resource to get clear on the thoughts here and then really have the conviction to be able to walk away and be like, all right, cool, I'm ready to roll. So Sharon says, I like the idea of separating and looking at the inner world and outer world impacts 100% because they definitely can be different and impact in different ways, priorities, levels of importance and urgency to work on. Yes, 100%, 100%. And sometimes we forget the inner world stuff. If you're playing in the inner world space, sometimes you forget about the outer world and vice versa. So it can be really nice just to see the flow and effects of what your program actually creates in the world. All righty. Are there any other questions or things that people would like to workshop? Okay. All right. Wonderful. Yes, I can do that. All right. So the worksheet should look like this. Now I was a bit cheeky and I added in a few extra things. So this is what the worksheet should look like. Now you might not recognize the first half because we definitely did not go through it, but I can take the time now to go through it. We started here. So let me just squeeze down some space, but this is where we started on. So starting point and finishing point, what are the steps to get there? Knowing that, okay, what is the identity? Maybe you might want to start here. What is the identity someone's stepping into? And then what do they maybe need to release? And then what habits might I want them to pick up along the way to help them step into that identity? And then we take all of that brainstorming. Again, this is where your post-it notes might actually come in handy. We start to create that movie. So start and what are the things along the way to steps? And those steps, essentially, I renamed the sequence. Module was a very course related thing. And you might find as well, you have way more steps, in which case you just hit, click here, right click and go insert row below. And then from there, it's like at each stage of that sequence, what action do you want them to take? So this is where momentum-based experiences are different from your traditional education Because traditional education will be like, all right, well, here's what you need to learn. And people are falling asleep because they don't know how to implement what they're learning. So we say, all right, at this step, what do we want them to do first? And then what is the bite-sized education or stories or things they need to know in order to appreciate that step and follow through? And then we look at, okay, cool. What resources do they need to make sure that we actually follow through? Do they need checklists? Do they need team bonding? Do they need to watch a tutorial on YouTube? Do they need a playlist so they can actually sit down and journal out whatever it may be if they've never journaled in their life? And then comes our fun friend, the metrics, which then goes into the progress report. The metrics are what do they get more or less of in this step? And then we map that across into the progress report, which you'll see below here. So this is where we start to map out your progress report. So if you want to think of instead of module one, maybe it's like step one. And you can start to create what I, let me just show you. Let's go over here. Let's go back a couple of steps. And you can start to create your progress report right before Blue Ocean. Yeah. So you can start to create your progress report. So when someone enrolls or comes into your program, maybe one of your opening sessions is, hey, just complete this. You're just writing a scale on a scale of one to 10. And we'll do it at the end and we'll see how far you've grown or 
what's happened in life. And so you can start to create that. So I'm just going to create this as step two. Now, obviously you'll have more steps. So just right click and go insert row below and just keep going. Now I've gone start, middle and end. You may not choose to start, middle and end. You might say it's start my program at the end of the program. Start of the day and the end of the day, whatever it is you wish to do. And then we come to your blue ocean. Now this, you might actually, you might have to play around a little bit with Google spreadsheets. Just email me if you're having any issues. But then you've got your one step or one snapshot of how you're different from everyone else. Now, I'm just, because we have time, I'm going to go quickly up to the top here. This is like extra bonus bonus. And yes, it totally can be really easy to create that graph in Canva. I just am not Canva literate <laughs> beyond putting words in. Let's say you've landed with your idea. What is the offer name or the program name? So you'll see often I use the word offer and program interchangeably. No worries, Alan. Thank you so much. Enjoy your meeting and Kat will let you know about the recording. What is your vision for the world? The reason why I like to ask this is just to ensure that whatever you are creating for your organization is in alignment with your organization's bigger vision. What's the quick pitch of it? And then just know that anytime, and you're probably aware of this, we are creating something. People pay for more wealth, more health, or more relationships. These are no-brainer categories that people throw money behind. So if you can work out how, whatever it is that you're offering, so let's say you're helping human beings or seniors become even more digitally literate. Is that helping in their wealth? Maybe. Maybe they can do online banking and they don't have to keep driving to the bank and chewing up fuel. <laughs> that could be one way you could pitch it. Is it happening with their health? Maybe, because maybe it's helping their mental health because they're able to connect with their loved ones who may not be in the same city. But ultimately, maybe it might be helping them in their relationships. So this just helps you land in what is the messaging I can actually relate to. And I encourage you to play around with, okay, don't go to the default and see like, what could my messaging, almost a fun exercise be if I was to play to the wealth or play to the health. So Gillette, the razor company, they've actually done ads in relation to relationships. And they're like, if you want the sexy guy who like does all the thing, he's got like the cologne and the hair and stuff, just have the sexy legs. And so you would think in Gillette, okay, maybe it's health related, but it, they made it a relationship-based ad. Similarly, there is now, I'm pretty sure it's a bean razor company and they've gone for the wealth messaging. I think it's the top tier executives now use this only brand and it's like subscription brand razor or something. So this can be quite fun to play with just to actually, whether it's you're attracting funding or attracting people into your programs, this can be quite interesting. Offer promise we've spoken about. And what's your intention for this offer? Sometimes just getting clear on that as well. Like how many human beings or how many times do you want to run this program or how many people do you want to impact? And one of my favorite questions is why is it needed right now? And funding bodies will also want to know this as well. Why is it needed? Now, when you go to then talk about it, and I may not go into this in all detail, but I absolutely recommend that you hit read on this post. So this is recommended. Actually, this is compulsory reading for anyone who comes into my world as a paid client is it probably will take you two minutes to read, but it really helps anchor in. I think anyone who's working for non-for-profits, I think you'll really resonate with the messaging around not just creating something for the creating for the sake of it, but creating something that's going to be a miracle for someone. So I would absolutely hit, you got to click, click on the hyperlink there, or you can copy and paste this link into your browser. But if you're wanting to even wonder if you have to show up on social media or if you have to actually attract people into your programs, going through this next section, which is calling in your dream clients, your people may not be clients, maybe they're students, maybe they're participants. So just swap out that language for whatever you need. But this helps you actually start to work out what, words you can put on social media or in your marketing videos to attract those people in. So one of the things that we sometimes forget to do is to actually take a moment to really sit with who do we want to attract. Now I'll give you an example of this. Is outside of this I have clients who are in businesses. And a lot of the time they're like, if you're broke and needing money or needing clients, I can help you. 
But the thing is by identifying, calling out people who are broke, you get met with that objection. And all of a sudden you're like, why can no one pay me? It's because you're talking to the broke people. So, you know, if you're wanting to attract a certain caliber of people, if you're wanting to help a certain bandwidth of people, the organizations I work with, they could easily go for those who are really on the the tough run of the spectrum of things. But just because we're with them for nine months and we're out there and we're volunteering and all the rest, they have a mid-range of people from like your, just your average human beings, your average teens to like the high achievers. And so we play in that bandwidth. And so making sure that you're using language to attract the bandwidth that you have capability for is really important. And ways that you can start to extrapolate and get inside their head is just answer the questions like, who do your people want to become? What do they want to create? What do they no longer want? And so you could then swing this into marketing message and be like, hey, if you're the kind of person who wants this and this and no longer wants to deal with this, that's why we created this program. Well, that's why we've created this experience. And that could be your opening message for your marketing. Okay. And here are a couple of other ones that you can use as well. If you ever want to run Google ads or just figure out what people are asking, this is a great question to tune into that. And sometimes people aren't aware they have a problem. So let's say I'm just going to keep going back to Kat's example for a second because I can relate to it with my grandma. My grandma doesn't really like technology a lot, but she may not realize that she has a a problem where she's missing out on so many different touch points. And so she may not know that Facebook and Instagram are one of the two places that my sister and I really show up and share our lives. And so she has no awareness of that. She doesn't know what she's missing out on. And so some of your ways of attracting in your people may just be educating them. Hey, do you realize that you're missing out on this? And we can help you with that. And finally, just identifying who your offer is not for and why can be very important just for your own mental sanity more than anything else. So that's the worksheet. Again, it is a snapshot of a full offer launch. So that's my secret sauce. I'm handing over my gift to you. Are there any questions before we wrap up? Let it be known that TK actually finished before time, which is a world record. That is amazing. How can we reach you if we want to learn more? Great question. So as Kat said, my 25-year-old self thought it'd be really epic if I created a business called Badass Beings. So B-A-D-A-S-S Beings, B-E-I-N-G-S.com. Otherwise, Instagram or Facebook. Instagram is probably my favorite place. So at tk.byron. But if you've downloaded the resource or caught it in the replay, just follow the breadcrumbs. I'll be there. All right, Kat, I'll hand it over to you now. Back to you. Awesome. I have to admit, I have got, my brain is spinning right now from so much information. The worksheet that you gave us today to work through is just fantastic. Oh, cool. Sharon's already started following you on LinkedIn. Oh, you're you muted, hon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, bless Sharon. Thank you. Probably my least showed up platform, but I will now that you're there. I'm like, oh, I've had a cry. <laughs> Do you have like, a Facebook group or anything? No. Okay. Not yet. Yep, no worries. But I love this article that you linked to of what would feel like a miracle right now. That just feels so incredibly powerful to me. And I know with my business, I've been going back because I've been adding more structure into the digital literacy for seniors. So I'm, I've been going back and identifying that ideal client avatar and kind of doing all of that really foundational work. So this is just such perfect timing for me. I'm so grateful. I got goosebumps. And thank you for checking out the, artic- the article, honestly, is like, I go back to it and read it at least once every year. Minimum. Yeah, I'm definitely going to bookmark it and save it and spend a little bit of time reading on that. So yeah, today has just been immensely powerful. If you have the ability to put some love up on the screen, I would invite you to do that and show TK some love. And yeah, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to her at badassbeings.com or on Facebook and LinkedIn your or Instagram and Facebook, but you are also welcome to contact us here at TechSoup Connect Australia because we have her contact information. My contact information is on the TechSoup website as well. So just feel free to contact me there. But I want to thank everybody for coming today. This has been amazing. Our next 
workshop is going to be on the 26th of October, which is a, again, a Wednesday. It's going to be at 4 p.m., not 11, 4 p.m. Adelaide time, so 4.30 Sydney time. And it's going to be about overcoming objections with content and getting clients focusing on content. So it's attraction rather than promotion. And that's going to be master business coach, Kat Miller. And we invite you to sign up for that at the TechSoup Connect website. Actually, let me just grab that link and drop that in the chat myself right now. And there's how to register for the next upcoming workshop. So again, thank you, TK, for joining us today and sharing your amazing expertise. Hopefully, we'll thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day.